Hi, this is Jeff Lowett, Technical Agronomist for Cooperative Farmers Elevator. And on this week's Field Friday segment, uh, you can see we're out in the corn again. Uh, I've been spending some time out here looking at various things, but uh, I thought we'd look at something that's you know been fairly common throughout our whole trade territory, uh, probably more widespread than I've ever seen before. Uh, but some of the July storms we had, and even some in August, had some issue. But uh, we've got a lot of green snap that showed up in fields. Just about every field has some. Um, this field actually has, you know, probably less than most, but it's got some good examples of what I wanted to show. Uh, so I thought we'd take a look at, so what happened to those plants that, you know, part of the plant broke off. Um, obviously, if it broke off below the ear, we know the answer to the question, but what about if that plant broke over the node above the ear, which is fairly common as well? So I thought we'd look at it now, long time after the fact, uh, see what's happened for the development out here. Um, you can see the stage of development. This corn uh, planted in mid-May probably is, uh, depending on maturity, somewhere around half to three-quarter milk line here being towards the third week of September. Um, but you can see here, here's a plant uh, snapped off the node above the ear. Um, so. We've got one leaf, basically the leaf that's attached to the ear node is still intact and still in pretty good shape. Everything else above that is gone. Something to keep in mind uh, as part of this discussion is the way a corn plant is des basically designed to, to feed itself, every leaf from the ear node up is what the photosynthesis that's happening, the sunlight that these leaves are capturing from the ear node up is what's feeding the ear. From the ear node down, these leaves that are below uh, basically are what helps keep that stalk healthy. Among other things, that's why if we have a lot of disease come in, start disrupting this solar panel, all these these leaves above the ear, we lose yield based on that, and that's because it's not very or it's not as efficient as it like to would like to be for photosynthesis. But so you can see, here's a, a plant right next to us. Nice ear, nice looking grain. Top is there. Plant right next to it, same size stalk. You can see what that only one healthy leaf attached to the ear node. You can see what happened there. Um, you can see a lot of this did pollinate. So it was successful at throwing silks, it was successful at capturing pollen, but it had so little photosynthetic area above that ear, it had basically one leaf to work with. Um, you can see it's, you know, it's hurt it significantly. Um, here's another plant, kind of the same thing. That one leaf uh, attached to the ear node, you can see there's just nothing here. It, did, it didn't really even develop any kernels, so that's nothing. So that's kind of, you know, fairly common in these fields as we get out and see them now. If you're lucky, you'll have this size ear. I've seen a few places or uh, you know a few plants for whatever reason were just a little bit better. Maybe a third size ear um, as, as their real ears would be. But again, significant loss, nearly 100% loss on some plants. But you start worrying even though you do have some of these small ears, are they even gonna get into the combine? Because they may not, may not even get caught with the stripper plates being too wide in some instances. So. This seems to be fairly common um, from what we've been seeing. So this plant is healthy. The leaves below it um, are still in, you know, in decent shape. So this plant has a healthy root system. Here's a picture of a plant that was green snapped um, in a field that had a lot of aphids in it. And so you can see aphids want to go where the most prolific sugar is, where they can suck on sugars and, and feed themselves. That's why a lot of times eventually they'll stack up on the, the husk ear leaves. Uh, that's where all uh, uh, the focus of that plant is, sending sugars to develop that grain. But you can see here there was no grain to feed. That plant was taking up a lot of sugars and you can see the aphids found that. They were just thick on this plant that was green snapped. Uh, the plants next to it obviously didn't have near as much. The aphids are gone now. What you're seeing now is the aphid residue and the basically the mummies or the cocoons of what's left, but I did come across this and it shows me that those plants were taking up a lot of sugar. Um, they were trying to feed what was no longer an ear there, so it had no place to go. So 
You'll also probably see that in these plants this fall. Um, those plants might be the ones that you're going along and you might notice those be really purple. Probably will stay green a little longer uh, potentially than the rest of the plants because it's still got sugar uptake and there's nothing to, no place for it to go. So as the sun bleaches those sugars, what you're going to see a lot of times will be a purple stalk um, in amongst stuff that's brown and, you know, and mature and dried. And it's just a difference of what that plant was trying to do with what it was uh, taking up. So I guess I just thought I'd touch on that. I know green snap is a big portion of what's been going on as far as problems that were widespread this year. Uh, obviously to different degrees and different fields, different hybrids, different planting dates and so on. But I haven't been in a field yet where I can say there's 100% no green snap. So um, just thought we'd touch on that. Um, so you have some idea what kind of happened and you can probably see that in some of your own fields. So uh, with that, that's this week's Field Friday segment and we'll see you next week.